Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we are back with a old video series which I did many, many, many years back. And this is something which I did in my Instagram recently. The topic was top 10 symptoms of a bad, afflicted, weak, debilitated, not so nice Mars. Okay, so I had made this series for moon and i think for sun also it's like three four years or five years back so you will find that in this omg astrology secrets playlist if you have not watched it but today is the topic top 10 symptoms of a bad or afflicted mars and of course we know mars is debilitated in cancer he's exalted in capricorn Aries is multricorn and scorpio's own sign but the thing is, astrology is not just uh, simplistically based on the signs. You know, there are a thousand factors. So the easiest way to know if a planet is doing good in your chart or not doing great is by seeing the results of that planet in that planet's Mahadasha or Antardasha. Or you can also see the natural traits that this planet represents in general, in your life, in your mind, in your habits, respective of that planet's dasha. Okay, So either you check the dasha or you check the karakatvas of that planet in general, or you can check both. Okay, So what are top 10 symptoms, which is the first symptom? of a bad or afflicted Mars. And as usual, if you're new, then please subscribe and hit the thumbs up if you like this video at the end. And if you want a consultation from me, my website is down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. Mm -hmm. The first symptom is people who have a bad Mars, they're unable to follow celibacy and retain their semen, which leads to perpetual laziness and lack of focus for long-term goals because uh, the semen, the virya, that, uh, that is very important for a man to preserve. And if somebody is uh, wasting it uh, by watching adult material or fantasizing about the opposite sex, uh, then what happens is the person, uh, the man becomes unmanly and there's nothing much left in him because then you will see uh, that the person cannot uh, be disciplined. He cannot maintain his commitments. He can't achieve anything big in life. Okay. And when I speak of achievement, I don't mean some uh, monetary or uh, post position related achievements, but anything substantial. Okay. So therefore preserving semen as uh, recommended by uh, the Vedic scriptures and also Ayurveda is very important. But if you are unable to preserve your semen and you lose it recklessly then uh, it is a very clear indication that your mars is not very good i don't care as i said where he is situated but you need to uh, practice brahmacharya and celibacy uh, if you are unable to do this and then you will see uh, the benefits of preserving semen you know ayurveda says there are more than 108 benefits of preserving semen what is the next uh, indication that somebody has a bad mars they are unable to assertively articulate personal boundaries, very important, and instead permit others to encroach upon those boundaries. So, for example, uh, everybody has boundaries in their life, you know, that which uh, any anyone and everyone cannot transgress, right? So, for example, you may have a boundary like, you know, I don't... I don't talk after 10 p.m. because I need to sleep. For for example, you know. So, but now suppose somebody calls you and keeps talking with you, you know, for hours, and it's like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. sometimes, and you don't say anything. Okay. So, <clears throat> healthy boundaries are very important for one's life and even for relationships. Okay. So, but if you are if you are unable to express that assertively, and you fear that if I say this, then the person will go away from my life, uh, then that shows there's a lack of confidence uh, in you for your own beliefs and uh, what you stand for. So this has to be done respectfully, not out of arrogance. But uh, if you not only cannot say, and on the other hand, you perpetuate people, uh, you entertain people who break your boundaries, then maybe uh, Mars is not the best placed in your chart. Okay. Number three, quick to anger and easily gets into fights. They have a short fuse and tends to get angry quickly. 
often leading to confrontations and unwanted arguments with others okay so uh, one of the easiest ways to identify your mars is you get triggered very easily okay i mean it's the gold standard so a good mars will uh give you this belief that whatever you believe is uh okay and uh if something somebody doesn't believe what you believe that is also okay you know you don't have to get triggered all the time <clears throat> uh, but yes a bad mars gives you this feeling that no you are right and you have to prove it to everybody in the universe that you are right and everybody else is wrong so then what happens is you get angry very fast and you will uh, get into fights you know you will uh, you, you you will get into petty fights with people over you know comments on politics religion social media this that blah 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 and the list is very long and you will often be very confrontational and uh, it will not be very easy to deal with that person because Anytime you say something which the person doesn't believe, uh, the person is going to try to hammer you and prove that you are wrong. You know, maybe it is not something which you are trying to tell that person to follow. But because the person is so insecure and does not believe in himself or herself, they will always try to sabotage your statements. Okay, they will be very confrontational and they will get into unwanted arguments, silly, baseless, useless arguments. Okay, so this is another way you can uh, find uh, somebody's strength of Mars, actually. Number four, this is not gold, but this is like, <laughs> I don't know, is there something better than gold? <laughs> Number four, makes impulsive decisions that leads to problems. Mm -hmm. They tend to act on their impulses without considering the potential consequences which can result in difficulties and complications. Interesting, right? Impulsive decisions. Have you seen people, they will, something happens and they will make impulsive decisions. Now, there's a very big difference between making quick decisions and making impulsive decisions. You know, like if you read books on successful people one of the traits which they have is they are very good good at making quick decisions they may the decision may be good or bad you know that that is a separate thing but they're very good at making informed decisions they take good risks okay but with a ma bad mars what happens is you will either not take any decision you will have paralysis by analysis or you will uh, make decisions hastily without considering pros and cons just on the basis of your emotions okay that that is a classic symptom of a terrible mars because then you are angry you decide oh i will block this person you are envious oh i will kill this person oh i will do this i'll do that you know uh, so uh, you, you you decide based on emotion so you do not have that sense control that self control to see the future and to get an assumption of how the future will be if I tend to do certain things and then later on you regret and lament, okay, which is not very nice. So therefore, uh, if you want to improve your Mars, always try to make informed decisions, you know, uh, see the pros and cons and see what you like, what you, what you aspire to be and how are people in that domain uh, becoming successful. You know? So you have to make informed decisions okay but if you just make decisions based on impulses that can uh, lead to a lot of problems in life okay which can result in difficulties and complications and by the way all this i'm reading from my instagram page <clears throat> number five they are hard to change hard to change their mind or compromise they find it difficult to be flexible or open to different viewpoints, often sticking stubbornly to their own opinions, okay? So being opinionated is not bad, but being so opinionated that you dismiss everybody else, uh, this is an indication of insecurity, okay? So if you are if I have a good Mars, you will be very opinionated, but your opinion will be like, okay, I believe this is right for me and maybe for you that is not right. You decide your life, I decide mine. You don't get into my boundary and I don't get into yours. But if you have a bad Mars, you will not only uh, not like if others come in your boundary, but you will also go and attack others in their boundaries, okay? You will try to change their opinion uh, beyond a certain extent. It is not recommended, okay? But uh, a person with a bad Mars cannot comprom compromise because he feels that if he compromise, he's losing, okay? But he can't see the benefits of compromise, you know, like uh, as, as they say, the best negotiation is when 
two parties, both the parties live with some dissatisfaction. But that is something which the person cannot believe because if the person sees that he's compromising, he feels, oh, I am letting go of so many things. But then the fool, uh, foolish person doesn't realize he's also going to gain a lot more by compromising sometimes. Okay. Now, compromise doesn't mean, you know, you tolerate everything bad with the, some others do to you. But then uh, when you are in an official or, you know, long-term relationship, you will have to compromise. Okay. Everybody has to, you know, nobody can claim I will never compromise, you know, but they're not very good at doing that, you know. <clears throat> okay. Number six, struggles to work well with others. This is also very, very vividly visible. Okay. <laughs> Teamwork does not come easily to them often and they often face challenges when collaborating with others. They boast a lot but are unable to implement. So they, are, they, they, they boast a lot of things. You know, I'll do this, ye karenge, wo kar denge. Hum hote to aisa ho jata. Hum, hamare paas ye hota to IIT mil jata hume, UPSC mil jata, ye mil jata, wo mil jata. They will boast a lot. You know, oh, if I, I would have this, I would have been in Harvard or I would have been in Stanford. You know, I would have been in Oxford, Cambridge. You know, if only I had this, you know, look at my neighbor. He had this, uh, this thing and that happened because of that, this person went there. You know? So, <clears throat> Or, or or when there's a situation when there's actually some need they will say oh mere paas ye hota to main aise kar deta waise kar deta if i had this i would have done it like this like that you know so they will speak of some imaginary prowess which they have or which they would have had because of some other reason which cannot materialize okay but uh, when it comes to actually doing things uh, they will most likely run away okay so this is and they are very, they are terrible at doing, uh, do, doing teamwork, you know. So uh, they, they may speak big things, but they will not be able to implement, okay. Because when you are in a team, because nothing great can be achieved without teamwork, okay. Anything great, anybody you see, even in the Ramayana you see, I mean, of course, Lord Ram, he is uh, Vishnu himself, but he has also set the example, you know. He uh, collected the help of great personalities like uh, Hanuman, then Sugriv, then Jambavan and so many, you know, but with them, it was a collective effort. So Lord Ram exemplifies teamwork in the Ramayana. He doesn't say, oh, I'll just go and kill Ravan, you know, that he can do alone by himself, but he doesn't do that because he wants to set an example of teamwork. And of course, loving exchanges between God and his devotees. That is the ultimate purpose. Number seven engages in self-destructive and violent behaviors. Mm -hmm. They exhibit behaviors that harm themselves or their own interests, even when it's not in their best interest to do so. You know, they, out of anger, you know, they may say, I'll shoot myself if I don't get this, you know. No, or they, they may cut their hand or, you know, something if they have some emotional, like, setback from somebody, you know. So self-destructive behavior, it's like, uh, you know, uh, getting into the smoking, drinking, you know, it's like not necessarily smoking, drinking, it, it could be anything, you know, watching pornography, masturbation, uh, perpetually destroying yourself. Uh, because see, what is Mars? Mars is protector. So when you get into self-destructive habits, your ability to be as a protector, a provider, um is reduced you know if, if you are drunk and you are just lying there and somebody comes and uh, tries to harm you then how will you protect yourself if you can't even protect yourself how will you protect others right so <clears throat> this is very important self-destructive habits number eight they pick the wrong battles and take miscalculated risks they run away when challenged with facts and get triggered or offended very easily. You know, there's a there's a saying I heard recently. I think it fits very well here. I have already made up my mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this is a situation where because of your emotions, you like somebody or <clears throat> you like some group or some organization, some country or some uh, position or you have attraction towards some philosophy it can be anything you know abstract or person organization country place religion whatever it is but because of emotions you somehow justify all the bad things which are there you know the things which should ideally not be there which you are supporting okay because you will try to justify by saying oh no they have this bad but you know there is this good thing you know blah 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 so because of that what happens is 
you will you will always pick wrong battles okay you you will not be able to see the facts because you are covered by emotions basically your ability to judge based on logic is destroyed okay so therefore uh, you should know which battles to pick because uh, if you are always fighting in life you know like by default by dint of your karma a lot of problems challenges difficulties austerities will come anyway but if you keep adding more battles on top of that and uh, on the other hand uh, whenever there is some injustice done to somebody you know uh, around you uh, then you will always try to kind of you know escape you will behave as if you know nothing has happened you know nothing wrong has happened i i didn't see you know i i didn't see i didn't hear i didn't speak you know something like that <clears throat> And uh, you will always be triggered and offended easily. You know, somebody says something, I don't disagree. Well, then fine, that's great. You don't disagree, that's your life. You decide you don't have to agree with everything that uh, I say or you say. But then uh, if you are insecure, then you will be very easily triggered and offended if somebody disagrees with you. Okay, number nine, tends to get jealous and possessive in relationships. They often experience jealousy and can be overly possessive in their romantic partnerships because <clears throat> they are always insecure. A bad Mars is always insecure because a good Mars tells you you are a protector, you are a worthy individual. But a bad Mars will tell you you are not a good protector. You cannot protect the others. You cannot protect your job. You cannot protect your relationships. You know, somebody will come and steal your job or they will come and steal your spouse, you know, something like that. So because of that, you are over possessive. You are overly dominating. You are overly anxious. You are overly depressing sometimes. Okay. And you throw all this to your spouse or, you know, to your colleagues sometimes and then they can't take it, you know, beyond a certain extent. And then you are left all alone. Okay. <laughs> Number 10, they have challenges or conflicts related to their sexual and intimate relationships because of narcissistic behavior, okay? <clears throat> uh, this is somewhat an extension of point number 9, but they have like high, high, high levels of narcissistic uh, behavior. You know, you, you can see, uh, I have a video on narcissism. You can type exotic astrology, narcissism, narcissistic behavior indications you would exactly know what I'm talking about, okay? So they will try to control you, manipulate you, dominate you, and then um, do things which are not very, which are not very much recommended, okay? And then they may abuse you also sexually, okay? And sometimes uh, they may, they may do things which apparently may seem that uh, by doing this, they are your well wishes, but they are hatching or planning something. So a good Mars will always be upfront and um, I won't say blunt, but he or she will communicate to you assertively that yes, this is wrong. What you're doing, I will not accept it. Please change your behavior. But a bad Mars is not like, they will see, okay, oh, okay, maybe, you know, I also need something from this person. So maybe I will tell him tomorrow this, that, you know, oh, maybe I can tolerate more, you know, oh, maybe oh, I know some other weakness, I'll exploit him like that, you know. So it is somewhat like the behavior of Shakuni in the Mahabharata, you know, always hatching background conspiracy, controversies, you know, like uh, never coming to the forefront, never attacking from the front, always attacking from the behind, always um, trying to find the weakness of somebody and trying to exploit them. And there's one bonus tip to spot if there, somebody has a bad Mars. They bully others and spread misinformation against someone who they are unable to defeat. Okay. Because they say if you can't destroy someone, then try to destroy their reputation. If you destroy someone's reputation, then uh, you destroy that person, right? <clears throat> so if they cannot face you in the battlefield in, in front of you one-on-one, -on -one, then they will take the back door and they will try to destroy your image. Okay. And to a large extent, they are successful, but not in the long run. You know, eventually the truth comes out. Satya meva jayate. No, no truth can be, no amount of darkness and lies and misinformation and fake news can cover the truth. Eventually it comes out. Okay. <clears throat> like we have the example of Lord Krishna. He was abused of stealing this Shamantak money, right? But then eventually it came out, you know, it, it was, he was not responsible for it. So eventually it comes out. So good Mars, if provoked, they will go and challenge in the face with facts, logic and proper um, 
proper substance. But a bad Mars will maybe say, oh, yeah, yeah, I surrender to you. But then they will hatch controversies in, uh, in, on the back side. Okay. So therefore, these are some of the indications of a bad Mars. So if you have any of these traits, then I have a video on remedies of Mars. Please go and watch it. You will find it. You, uh, I, I'll try to pin it in the description section. And yes, uh, if you have these, then don't worry. Uh, try to stay with people who have a good Mars. You know, you you will learn how to uh, elevate your life to a next to your to the next level. A good Mars is very important, especially in the twenty first century in Kali Yuga. Okay, <clears throat> so irrespective of where your Mars is, how is it placed, with whom, alone, afflicted, exalted, everybody needs to improve their Mars. You know, these planets represent energies within us. So. Uh, if you want to improve your Mars, the best thing to do is to study the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, where you will find the story of Lord Narsimhadev and Hirnakashapu and Prahlad Maharaj, because Narsimhadev is the avatar uh, which uh, signifies Mars. Okay, and you can also chant this mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Narsimhaya. This mantra you can chant. You can fast on Tuesdays. There are so many other things you can find in that remedies video. So I hope you see that and you improve your Mars. Okay. Thank you very much for your patient uh, hearing and greetings for Janmashtami tomorrow or day after whenever you are celebrating. And yes, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you think might have a weak Mars. Okay. And Please, if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope, you can always go down to my description, to the description section in my web, uh, for my website, you will find it there. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you to improve your Mars. Thank you.